Imagine a future where, instead of using your hands to control electronic devices, you control the devices simply by thinking about it. A world where, instead of sending someone a text message, you can send them a thought. Believe it or not, we may be rapidly approaching a future where these sort of tasks are not only possible, but are common in everyday life. The field of neurotechnology, while still very much in its infancy, will dramatically change the way we interface with computers. And if you believe people like Elon Musk, it may even one day provide a basis for humanity to merge with artificial intelligence. Who knows, someday you may even get an implant that makes you smarter than Einstein. Neurotechnology is any device that images or stimulates the brain, and brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, take this concept a step further to control machines or computers. Throughout this lesson, we will jump between the two concepts, but understand that BCIs are a more specific subset of neurotechnology. So, how will this tech be used? There are many uses for neurotechnology, whether it's used for cognitive enhancement, uh, brain research, uh, brain research, alleviating symptoms of illness, modulating pain, or even improvements to existing technologies such as robotic prosthetics, we are very clearly just at the emergence of this amazing technology. Cognitive enhancement, the ability to, to improve or, quote, upgrade the brain, while previously only in the realm of science fiction, appears to be close to science fact in the field of neurotechnology. Neurostimulation, the ability to directly send signals to the brain using electronics, could be used to improve performance in human perception, learning, memory, tension, and decision making. Several studies have laid the groundwork for humans to someday possess superhuman cognitive abilities, and neurotechnology could be the key to unlocking this. It is unlikely in the future that we will be able to treat cognitive disorders such as reading disabilities using neurotechnology. Some devices can be used to treat dyslexia while wearing it can be used to treat dyslexia. While wearing a device, participants were asked to read through several sentences. The device was shown to improve reading speed significantly compared to when the participant was not wearing the device. For people who struggle with reading, this device could change the way they learn new information. These stimulating devices can help people struggling with dyslexia, but could they also be used to improve the way people learn? The ability to augment the way we think may just be the tip of the iceberg for neurotechnology. It may be possible to develop the ways to experience completely new sensations uh, with the use of brain-computer interfaces. Theoretically, you may be able to tap into the optic nerve to allow humans to see entirely new wavelengths of light. Imagine being able to see perfectly in the nighttime by switching your vision to infrared mode. Or how crazy would it be to connect the auditory nerve in order to play music directly to your brain? How crazy would it be to press play on your phone and immediately hear music without putting in headphones? Neuroprosthetic, uh, neuroprosthetics are devices that restore lost functionality. This includes prosthetic limbs that are directly controlled by the brain or peripheral neurons, cochlear implants to restore audition, retina implants to restore vision, and somatosensory implants which restore touch. Brain-computer interfaces, as the name implies, are also used for controlling computers with the mind. Researchers have su successfully shown a brain-controlled Android tablet that gave users the ability to send text messages, search the web, watch videos, check the weather, and stream music just by thinking about it. Currently, neurotechnology is primarily used within the research and medical fields. The most prominent uses include seizure detection and pain management. By using a technology called deep brain stimulation, people who suffer from Parkinson's disease can opt to undergo a surgery to be implanted with electrodes that stimulates the dopamine-producing areas of the brain. These devices can help mitigate the main symptom of Parkinson's, which is uncontrollable muscle tremors. The future of neurotechnology and brain-computer interfaces. Regardless of how long it takes to implement, it is, clear that, it is clear at this point that neurotechnology will play a large role in the future of humanity. Future applications of neurotechnology already appear in media, although the realism of these devices may be up for debate. One example is The Matrix. This 1999 film, in this 1999 film, we see an excellent representation of how invasive neurotechnologies may allow for humans of the future to interact with an incredibly realistic simulation of Earth. This brings into question whether or not our own reality may be simulated, and it's very possible that in the future it may be possible for us to distinguish reality from our advanced simulations. 
It also brings into question our own reality. After all, if reality can be accurately stimulated, who's to say that our current reality isn't? To recap, so far we've talked about what neurotechnology and brain-computer interfaces are. We looked at how they're used and looked at how they may be used in the future. But as with any emerging technology, there are potential risks that we have to consider ahead of time. Neurotechnologists have a responsibility to consider the ethical and societal impl uh, implications of the neurotechnology that they are creating. Uh, to start, let's take a look at how neurotechnology and brain-computer interfaces are portrayed in the media to get an idea of where public sentiment currently stands. Science fiction is often a good, or at least useful, predictor of the future of technology, uh, as it often inspires innovators to create. You don't have to look too far to find neurotech and brain interfaces popping up in our media. In several films, such as The Matrix, Ghost in Shell, Inception, Total Recall, and Avatar, Advanced BCI systems are the primary driving force of the narrative. There are several examples outside of film that make dystopian predictions about neurotechnology, such as the TV show Black Mirror and several books. The underlying theme behind these works is that, uh, a, is that of a warning of where this technology might go. We will use many of these examples as a vehicle to talk about neuroethics. Nearly all of these media examples generally paint a dystopian future for brain-computer interface technologies. They tell us a story of thought manipulation or behavioral mind control, a loss of humanness. Through an over-reliance on technology, the ability for others to peer into our thoughts and memories or other dangerous side effects. This video contains spoilers for the following pieces, Black Mirror episodes, White Christmas, and Entire History of You, The Matrix, and Iron Man. Vulnerabilities and Abuses of BCI Technology One of the great marvels of the last few decades was the creation and adoption of the internet. The internet provided a free and open way to express ideas, share information, and build new things. This openness, however, has come with some perils, namely scams, computer viruses, and malware. While these are problematic today, they could be catastrophic when we use devices connected directly to our brains. In the White Christmas episode of the Netflix series Black Mirror, we see, we see many of these concerns brought to light. Citizens of this futuristic society are equipped with ZEIS technology, which allows them to record memories, stream experiences to others, and serves as a visual interface for most technology. In this future, ZEIS has replaced smartphones and computers. Opening the episode, we are greeted with the main character, Matt Trent, viewing a live audiovisual feed from a client he is helping talk to women. Matt can communicate with his client directly through his brain. This quite obviously presents concerns about mind reading or coercion if put in the wrong hands. Perhaps the scariest part is that, at the end, it is revealed that government workers can view this information and use it against individuals in a court of law. To avoid technical vulnerabilities, Neurotechnologists should assess the degree to which potential adverse effects could harm the user. For example, while theft of brain data would certainly be problematic at any scale, if someone hacked into a modern EEG device, the effect that they could have would be fairly minimal compared to some more advanced devices that we can imagine. Who is, to, uh, who is allowed to administer or sell the device? Are there any physical safeguards, like an override switch? You must create physical limitations on the technology uh, or prevent to limit damage that an outside party can have, like making it physically impossible for a stimulatory electrode to deliver a pulse over a certain intensity, making it less likely that a malicious controller could do harm. In a more subtle way, it may be possible for bad actors to influence the wearer's thoughts, giving hallucinations, changing of political affiliations, or even, uh, more frighteningly, uh, influencing people to commit crimes. Another potential step to lowering uh, risk factors involves requesting government intervention. Individuals or organizations could lobby governments to include certain safeguards and regulations. In the United States, the Food and Drug Administration already classifies medical devices based on these criteria and requires extensive testing and transparency during development. 
Governments could grant individuals unlimited rights to access their brain data, similar to GDPR in the European Union, which gives Europeans full rights to access their online data on request. Ethical and moral issues. Informed consent and respect for persons are important concepts in human subject research. Respect for person persons is the recognition of each individual as unique, free, and autonomous. Informed consent states that the user of the technology must understand what they're signing themselves up for uh, in language that they can understand. BCI users should be aware of the pros and cons of the technology they are using and any potential alternatives that are available. They should understand how their information is being collected and used. Will this data be sold to advertisers? Can brain data be used against you in a court of law? And who owns your data? In the movie The Matrix, we see the consequences of violating consent in a rather extreme way. The movie potential, in the movie, potentially billions of humans are plugged into a simulation at birth with no intent to inform them of their situation or offer alternatives. Once individuals are made aware of the situation, it clearly causes them significant distress. In fact, some characters in the film would, would rather that they uh, have never been unplugged at all. It is imperative when designing technology uh, that special care uh, is made to be transparent and communicative. Social justice. We expect that someday the non-medical benefits of neurotech will eventually outweigh the costs and risks that are presented today. In this future, it might be commonplace to purchase upgrades to your body. Current companies like Neuralink, whose end goal it is to, quote, merge the human brain with AI, are currently working on cognitive enhancement technologies that they hope will significantly increase human mental capacity. For many, this is a really exciting future as it means that we will start to be able to modify our bodies and brains to become exponentially more capable and productive. The dark side of this transformation is that it will likely facilitate a deeper divide between economic classes. For example, current invasive brain-computer interfaces can cost millions of dollars to research and, impl and implant. But let's assume, through economies of scale, that in the future there will be a brain implant for recreational use that costs $50,000, already a significant reduction in cost. The device would allow you to store and download memories, learn new skills faster, and search the web without the use of a screen. This would be, and please pardon my pun, a no-brainer, as long as you could afford it. The brain upgrades would further increase the wealthy's productivity, making them more valuable as employees. Eventually, those who couldn't afford to upgrade their brains would likely be relegated to lower-paying jobs and be seen as less intelligent. As in many other aspects of society, it is likely that these divisions would fall on racial and gender lines. For an example, consider the film Iron Man. Tony Stark is a billionaire. He uses his wealth to create a superpowered exosuit that is controlled by, the, by his brain. Of course, he is the only one with the means to produce this type of technology. Any form of combat with another human, in any form of combat with another human, he has a clear advantage. So how can we address this without slowing the production of the technology? There are several routes that can be taken. Governments could provide subsidies to acquire these devices based on income. Companies could offer a wide range of products similar to how smartphones are sold today that could have similar core functionality but add additional bells and whistles to those who can afford to pay more. Maybe anyone uh, could get a device that increases learning speed for a few thousand dollars, but if you wanted to play immersive video games, you'd have to reach deeper into your pockets. Transhumanist Dependency the widespread use of neurotechnology could also create a forced dependency for those who do not want to accept it. If everyone that you were ever competing with in the workforce had extra abilities, be it enhanced memory, increased capacity to learn, or in order to land a job, you, you would be required, or at least heavily incentivized to invest in a neural interface. This may force the hands of many to purchase and implant the technology when they otherwise would be unwilling to. The phenomenon is certainly not new in regards to technological progress, though. In the modern world, it's almost impossible to compete in the workforce or interact socially without a laptop or smartphone. 
This, technolog this technological dependency would likely be increased if humans could exponentially enhance their own cognitive abilities. This, quote, dependency slope further exacerbates other ethical concerns with neurotech, uh, such as worries about being left behind, might cause individuals, companies, and countries to overlook important ethical or safety concerns. This could be seen as a violation of informed consent as well. Most neurotech in sci-fi media does not even deal with the question of adoption. It is just assumed that once the ball gets rolling, the technology will reach widespread adoption for fear of being left behind. In the Black Mirror episode, Entire History of You, it is very clear that almost everyone has a neural implant called the grain. The grain is implanted behind the ear and is necessary to interface with many modern technologies. It provides invaluable benefit to the user and gives them many advantages over others without a grain. As outside, observ uh, as outside observers, however, we can understand that in a society where anyone's memories can be recalled and displayed at any time can lead to panopticon state, to a panopticon state. But since this tech has become so intertwined with daily life, the characters don't even question it. In fact, when the core group learns that a member of the group uh, got her grain removed, they look down on her and think that she's crazy to give up. Thank you for watching my lecture. Hopefully you've learned something new about uh, this exciting technology and some of the um, ethical challenges that might come along with it.